Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session where uh, my dear brother Etienne here and I continue to our discussions around developing a, a Unity uh, video game or an experience uh, according to the standard, right? In the last time, you know, Etienne and I kind of went through the high level design as every project would start, you know, with, you know, what we want to do, what's our vision, what are the components that we want to kind of deliver. And then from there, we basically went and said, okay, you know, we need an API, we need a, a bunch of uh, base components, we need a bunch of things that will kind of help us kind of build that project. And uh, Etienne, I think Christo was so kind, you know, he basically uh, yeah. used his, uh, his, <laughs> his amazing machine, the standard magic. <laughs> yeah, his his magical machine. Let's see here. He he sent me a message yesterday. He said it's all done, man. You know, you're good to go. Um, so I looked at let's take a look at Christo Christo's work here. And let's see here. So uh so the core API. Yep, he got he got everything, including the infrastructure. Mm -hmm including even the build pipeline everything everything is ready and he said i you know i tested it i i made sure that you have all the controllers he built moves controllers matches controllers yes. and players control i'm assuming all the crud operations i'm assuming yep he gave you like <laughs> yes. pretty much the work yeah. of like probably a month, a month. <laughs> yeah, yeah probably a month worth of work if not more yeah. he just yeah <laughs> if not more he just knocked it all out the beautiful thing about his his uh, standardly C77 pull requests, if you look at uh, the 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 code that he generates, it's also test driven. Like truly, yeah. if you see a fail, it's just going into the fail piece. You won't see the interface. You'll just see the exceptions and the tests that you need to do. It's quite down to the last minute of detail, which is. A good thing and a dangerous thing because I still want people yeah. to know how to modify yeah. this code. But overall, yeah, if we're doing something like this and we want to get off the ground super fast, yeah, Christo, Christo is there. He does that fun stuff. So okay, so that's that's the that's the API side, right? Now let's see here. Let's see. So on the other side, there is the let's I'm just trying to go back to the map, right? The map here for for the game. And uh, let's see. So this is the API. He basically finished all of this, this entire component here, right? And you and I are probably going to go through this piece, but I want to first start in yeah. here. I want to basically build something called a, a player base component. You know, let's first imagine what would that look like. You know, from from my perspective, I'm assuming. Let me see if I can open the same file here, Etienne, so I can update. Yeah, there you go. Okay, here it is. So let's go back here first, real quick. Okay. We have all these things. Uh, let's see. Yeah. So so this was the architecture. This was the overall architecture. So basically, he took all of this and finished it. Uh, the turn part, I'm assuming, just just an idea. I'm assuming that would be something like a, like a. It looks like a block in a way that has the player name on it, right? So let's just. I'm just trying to visualize what would that look like, you know. Um, so I'm assuming it will be something as simple as just going and saying. You know, I have this block in here that's sitting. Of course, we're gonna have two of them sitting on top. It will look like a it will look like a Stone Age tic tac toe, basically, like a bunch of yeah. rocks that when people play the game, they can get the experience of like literally carving the mark on the wall, right? And yeah. we could probably find some nice fonts and stuff like that. But maybe the design would be something like, you know, we want, you know, this will be Etienne. I hope I typed your name right. Yes. Yeah. And then this is Hassan, right? <laughs> so a block like that. We need a block like this, and that will be the base component. So this base component in here, this here is the player base component. That will be, for instance, player block or something. And we want this block to kind of light up fire 
when it's the player turn, but it's not turn mm -hmm. yet. It's not the player turn. Like the turn will be the next one. So if it's your turn, yeah. it will show like fire coming out of your block. It says that it's your <laughs> yeah. turn, right? In 3D. Yeah. You know what I mean? Here, here I am tapping into my artistic side of things, <laughs> whatever that <Yeah>. is. <laughs> so, so, so let's do that. How do we do that? I'm going to give you back kind of the control. I want to do that block in okay. here. Right. Okay. Or do you want to do it? Like, where do you want to, where do you want to start? We need to start with, so, so if you have, do you have the, well, first of all, we need the initial project, the initial unity yeah. project, right? And out of this unity project, this is of course where we're exploring as we go, right? Which is fun because this is how I played with Blazor until I mastered it. it we're basically exploring certain ideas that we're trying to chase. In this case, we need to initialize. Let's just initialize a Unity project. Let's just start with that step. Okay. Go ahead. No pressure. Let's go. <laughs> no, no. Let me just get my screen. <coughs> uh, present, right? Share screen. Okay. Yeah. Which screen right. are you seeing? Okay, the cool. Game is a foot. Let's go. <laughs> foot. Um, okay, so we yeah, so we created you created that repository for the game. That's right. Just need to check quickly where it is. Uh, I checked it out. Yeah. This is this is it in Visual Studio so long. Yep. Obviously, there's nothing yet. Yep, bare minimum, just a bunch of designs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I'm just quickly going. Um, okay, first of all, we need to. So, Unity doesn't like. I'm sure there's a better way of doing this, but Unity doesn't like um, mm. when you create when you create a project. With, yeah. with the folder that's not empty yet. So we kind of need to do it outside and then... Yeah, that's okay. I do that sometimes too. copy everything. Yep, that's fine. Oh, yeah. mm. Okay, so in the, in the create project wizard here, mm -hmm. um, we'll probably create a 3D game, right? So we yeah, can just right. go with four. There's oh, a bunch of other right. options here, but that's like more graphics. That's really. Yeah, and that's literally what people like were saying. We're saying your concepts are great, but show me what that looks like. Yeah, in a 3D kind of experience. Yeah. Oh, look so at all these ones. Cool cool AR, AR. There's, there's your AR for, for yeah. HoloLens. You guys nice. nice. So this gives you like, this is like your project templates in Visual Studio. You know, when you go, give me a Blazor template or what. Nice. This gives you like a bunch of stuff out of the box. But let's start with a blank 3D project. Yeah. Um, uh, what are we going to call it? Rock, that's rock steady. Go. Oh, yeah. Let's change this. Let's change that guy. So it's going to create it on a secret. Right. Yeah. It didn't switch your mic, please. <laughs> hey, can you hear me? Yeah, I think it's coming from your camera. It's a, it's okay, I think. Mm. I think. Let me check and try. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I think I just need to speak louder. <laughs> yeah, you're fine. So I know it's it's a little later over there. You know, let's see. What what time is it over there? Uh it's like uh um seven, seven PM, I think. No. Uh, seven twenty four seven. <laughs> seven twenty four seven. <laughs> All right. Cool. Okay. Yeah, let me just let me just create it there. Let's do it. Okay, so now it's just gonna obviously create it. This does take a little bit of time. Mm -hmm. Okay, it does open it automatically. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's just loading. Mm -hmm. Initialize the project quick. Da, 
I remember uh I remember someone at work was uh was uh showing me something like that. It takes a little bit of time, doesn't it? When you're trying to initialize a new project and all that. There's there's probably a chance there to see I I feel like the gaming market is ready for a more optimum, you know, kind of uh engineering experience focused, you know, platform yeah. for, for gaming and stuff like that, which is what I'm trying like like I can't just come off the bat and say, hey, let's do an entirely new, uh, uh, you know, d development environment for gamers, right? Uh, or for game developers, you know, I need to see what's already there, you know, and out of that, I learn and see what's what's possible. And then maybe we can rally up the standard community and say, hey, guys, who wants to build an IDE with me? Like a gaming, we should call it a GDE, a gaming development environment. <laughs> that, would be, <laughs> yeah. that would be nice. <laughs> like, your, like your own, yeah. Like your yeah. Own. Yeah, and then we kind of we kind of learn from from. Uh, by the way, just just to let you know, um, a, a buddy of mine, uh, you know, he's he's a very nice guy. His name is Ali Khan. He basically said to me, uh, "There is probably an opportunity." Like he he watched some of our videos, and he basically said to me, "Hassan, you know, just just so you know, that the same pattern that you're looking to implement, uh, you can actually like Unity has like an experimental approach for that pattern." where you have like services and components and stuff like that. And uh, he gave me a link, but uh, I'm trying to I'm trying to remember where I shared that link. Um, let's see here. Uh, give me a second. Yeah, the standard. Yeah, Unity's new multi-threaded. There you go. So just while we're while you're loading mm -hmm. your project, I'm going to tell you he shared this with me. He loves Unity. He loves to play around with Unity. He's actually one of the uh, engineering leads to actually build these experiences, you know, at Microsoft. And he shared this with me. He said in here, they're going to be rebuilding Unity's core, right? And what they're going to do is that, you know, they, they, you want a convenient sandbox, you know, uh, create complex worlds faster. And then he talked a little bit about how they're going to break things into I don't know what a DOTS dots package is all. That's yeah, that's the um that's that new the new the new um framework they, they created. Oh yeah, like I remember created. Yeah. Mm. We so, had that chat with, with um Wardy. Right. Uh, so so he he didn't say services, he said components and systems. And systems mm -hmm. is what is is what we call in the standard a service right so see, yeah. yeah so if you look at their stuff okay so you have the assets that's all the pictures i'm assuming and stuff like that and then if you look at uh or maybe everything is in uh, there's packages okay what's in the assets tests editor demos common and inside common there's a whole bunch of things like that i don't know where is his where is their examples for Let's see, hybrid, project settings, packages. I guess the whole game is in the assets area. Is that what it is? Yeah, that's that's where everything everything you'll see in Unity will, will come and be at. Your code, mm -hmm. your... Where is the C-sharp code then? Let's see. It should... It should where where would that land? Is it would be in the URP? No. Uh... I'm not if sure. You go to, to the, yeah. the, is this the assets? Yeah. They have a hybrid example. Like this is, this all is entity component system, but I don't know. Oh, there it is. Entity component system example. There it is. So, okay. So assets. Okay. Now where are the systems? Use case examples. Uh, would that, would that be it? state machine ai yeah there you go there you go so that's it's what just... they call a system so that... <clears throat> yeah but it's still too complicated it's it's not simple enough it, it, I understand. it would really be awesome if, if we were able to to create like a i i haven't played around with myself to be honest mm. uh because I, I haven't had application mm -hmm. needed to create a project that i would need because this is like this is perfect for mass when you have like thousands and thousands or even 
I'm sure you can have millions of, of mm -hmm. um, objects in a game. You yeah. know, like a, like maybe I'd like a, you know, like a total war game. Where you yeah. Have Five thousand people here. Yeah. That, that, this is yeah. perfect for that the rendering and processing and all the logic because it does like in parallel, multi-threaded. Nice. It would be cool if we can if we can standardize or create. Yeah. Use this in a standard way. Yep, that's which that's what will really improve the performance of your application. But yep, yeah, I agree a hundred percent. That's what that's what this is really all about. You know, to be able to kind of go and say like. If I'm, if I'm like, like, imagine this, if I have a kid that I'm trying to teach, you know, uh, gaming and I'm telling them, Hey, here's all the things you have to do to run mm -hmm. <laughs> a simple game. They're going to freak out. They're going to run away, you know, because it's, yeah. not, simple. it's not simple enough. <laughs> so, right. Yeah. Anyway, let's go back to you. Do you have your project ready yet? Yeah. Let's uh, do it. Let me just. Switch. There you go. Whoa, it's... nice. It's gonna whoa, uh, yet again. <laughs> Sorry, man. You're fine. Where is this? <laughs> okay, okay, nice. so this is just a basic project. Um, yes, it's not in our repository yet. Yeah, that's okay. But I'll, I'll move it. Yeah, yeah, that, it and... that's fine. You have, you have full access there, you can push it whenever. Um, the one thing I want to do, it's really important. Even the process of developing this system is important because it's not about what the end result. It's about, you know, how we get to that end result. That's what the standard is all about. So here's, here's yeah. what I want to do. I want to create a folder called views and inside okay. that folder, uh, go ahead, go ahead. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So here's so a folder views. called views. And then inside that folder, let's create something called uh, base, bases, bases. Yep. Yeah. Another like a base component. Yep. Yeah. And then inside bases, we want to create a new folder called a, the, uh, the uh, a player base component. And that's that block that we want to, Okay. Uh, script, right? Player. Yeah. Base component. Okay. So this base component is not supposed to have any business logic in it. Ideally, it'll just receive a a an input parameter that's the player name, and then it will render that player name, you know, in real time. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So so how would we? Go about doing something like that. Okay. Um, sorry, let me just let me change this back. I was working in Rider recently. Okay, so we need to display a name. Mm -hmm. And the base component would be, according to what we figured out last time, would be a mono behavior, right? It would mm -hmm. be a component on your. So 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 yeah. So let me go back to this. So this component, can you make it? So okay, we want to make that component receive a parameter from the outside. Okay. Right. Let's see if we can make it receive some parameter. Okay. Um. Okay. We'll obviously have. We'll obviously have a, a string for a name, or would this be? Yeah, it'll just be a string. Yeah, it'll just be a, a normal string. Yeah. Okay. Um. Hmm. Let me quickly think. If we, if we have, hmm. should we maybe create that visually as well in the view? Yeah, so like so, blocks. so you, right. So you're gonna take the parameter and then you're gonna build that block for the view that's attached to this base component. Like how I'm visualizing this is that you have some, you know, visual piece, but there's the C sharp piece that's sitting behind it, and that's your base yeah. component. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Let's do that. So let's let's. Um... 
So let's just create, let's just originally create something to say, it would be good for us to visualize it. So it's going to move these things around a bit. Uh, okay, so this will be our, let's imagine this to be our block, uh -huh. a player. Uh, maybe not that big. <laughs> 50. It's a bit off to see. Let me just take this off. Can you still hear me? Or am I talking to? to I'm, I can hear you, but it's like you're in a room. Like it's coming from your camera, probably. Uh, okay. That's okay. Next time we'll we'll make sure we do a mic check. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You know, actually, uh, if you go into the settings of your, um, if. If you go to the settings of your uh, StreamYard, it'll give you a bunch yeah. of options of the mics that you have. I don't know if you have. Yeah, I tried. I tried the different, huh. but that, but then it doesn't pick up. Yeah, that's okay. That's all right. We can hear you still. It's loud and clear. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Okay. So the as I understand it, the base component is this. If this is what your your view component will reference, right? Yep. So base component it's, is it's like almost like a code behind. Yeah, it's the cool. graphics and bare minimum code, minimal code behind that. That just takes inputs and renders them. It doesn't do any logic. It doesn't do any iterations. It doesn't do anything. You know? Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Let's add. Um, let's add. Okay, I'll need to I'll need to add mm. sticks sticks mesh pro. Nice. Right, let's do this. Let's create it from here. Mm -hmm. It'll ask me to import it. You just click import. Sounds good. I'm hoping that all of this will be sitting in in one folder underneath bases, which would be called the the player base uh, the player base component. Let's see. It's like you have yeah. A, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. If you ever get it, error. Yeah, I don't know why it's throwing an exception now. So what is it saying? Sprite, asset, blah. The, the thing about these libraries is that they have like, it's like a... I think the font wasn't set. Yeah. I don't know why it did that. It doesn't normally do that. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes you get things like it. That, that's the thing. You have, you have something honed down, and as soon as you start demoing it, it breaks. You don't ever know why. This happens to almost yeah. every engineer out there. Yeah. Every engineer out there. Yeah, it's I mean it's this is like there we go. Now it yeah. doesn't. Sometimes nice. it just picks out. Okay, let's center it. And this one's gonna put it place. Yeah, it'll just say player or something. Yeah. Yeah. But player. but uh yeah, but somehow we want the C sharp for this component you know, to allow input from other components, which is going to be up upstream components that will be passing the name for that player. Right. Okay. How, how do we, can we visualize that? Like, in yeah, the, yeah, yeah. In so so let, me, let me show you. Yeah. Let me take your screen for a sec. So, so okay. check this out. So the, how this is going to look like, so this is this is your base component, right? Yeah. What it what it should be having, you know, in a way that that people could understand is two things. It has this file. It has these two files. One of them is your UI. So that's your component stuff, the assets, whatever it's called. And then in the back here, there's the C sharp piece. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is one up front, and this is one sitting in the back at this realm like that right now what happens then what happens is that this guy is exposing programmatically accessible component or a parameter that allows like if we put this in one piece like that let's send this to the back that's your base component 
some other component upstream will be able to go and say pass that parameter which is the player name let's say Etienne, like this like this but what is it yeah so it's passing that to the c sharp file that renders it on the ui a real life example of this is that let me show you check this out so here is a real life example if you look literally at I don't know. Let's look at uh, Tara, uh, yeah, Tara full portal. This is a UI component. And if you look into the views, bases, and then, I don't know, a button base, for instance. Look at this button yeah. base here. It has a parameter that you can pass in that renders the, the label on that button. Right? So it's just a button, and you're basically passing yeah. in a parameter. And this parameter is rendering that so when that label gets passed in look in that same folder you will see something called so there's button base razor button base razor.cs so watch this yeah. this button base razor will take that property which is the label and just render it with whatever html markup component that we have see that see that kind okay. of yeah can, can we do the same here you know that's the question uh, okay so so basically there's a few ways you can go about this uh -huh. um one thing where you would do you do need though is because because what we create here yeah, the code behind this will also be a component right mm -hmm. so, let, so let me do this let me let me drag this onto here so this will be our component but this will be the, the the thing like you say that the, the code that will update this value here on this right. on this other component so we need a reference to right. this component yes and there's obviously a few ways you can do it um there's better ways to do it but let me show you the the kind of the default way you would do it in unity yeah is you would actually reference that component uh -huh. either through like a prior private or let's just make it public for now mm -hmm. uh that specific component's name is DMP underscore. I don't know what they, why they have this naming convention. It's terrible. Let's just call this our text um, UI. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm 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 not going for perfect perfect. Yeah yeah yeah. Here. Okay. Well, let's call it our label exactly like you. Yeah, let's like call it label. Name. Yeah yeah yeah. So now. When this compiles, you will see. I should say, yeah, I should show that property or something. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my there lord! All of this work. So okay, I can just drag it in. And then now, because you have a reference, other connected. Text, yeah. Now you can say label dot text or whatnot equals. So you're saying text. okay. So you're saying I need to create a method that sets that label. A public method yeah. on that component or something. Yeah, let's let's quickly get a so, yeah, so if we go to label dot text. Yeah. Uh, and the equals, property is lowercase t. Oh my god. Yeah, I I don't know why. But, okay. <laughs> okay. If, if you can speak to the, the that's why I asked you know Unity guys there. <laughs> That can mm -hmm. actually change these things. Well, well, the thing is, it's mainly built by cool. designers who know a little bit of back end mm -hmm. and also add standardization on top of that. It gets a lot more spicy and interesting. But uh, uh, so, OK, how do I expose that to the outside world? Like, how do I let okay. a different component pass the values of parameters to this one component here? To this component, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Um, so this is where, so we have a, so our, if, if I understand our player, our player component, this, this thing, right? Yes. It's, yeah. it's by itself. Yeah. Okay. Where, what, what, what other class, what class would reference this, this, ah, um, 
so so the one yeah. that will reference this let me go back to our architecture here i'll take your screen for a sec so oh. the one that would reference this actually you can just keep your screen shared because i'm just in the studio i'm just switching in between so um there will be a component called a player component above this one which yeah. eventually will lead to a player turn component and this player turn will choose the fire next to the name of the player that it cares about see what i'm saying so so you see how you see how you referenced the uh, text box in your unity app just right now when you basically went and created a public field and you basically went and said link that property to this it's going to be exactly the same thing except that you're not linking that text box anymore you're linking that base component that you created as a whole into another yeah. component if that's possible yeah. if it's not yeah. then that's we really definitely, need yeah, that's, Go ahead. Go ahead. yeah that's definitely possible okay cool um so, uh -huh. go ahead go ahead yeah because how i understand it like that is you have that that player component part that is your your view component right because no, the view component represents no, no, no. the base component. Oh. No, no, they're all views. Yeah. All of these guys are views, right? But at this point, these views are kind of building on top of each other, right? This okay. view component that you're talking about, it has the bare minimum of logic needed to take in a player as an input and then render that base component that you just built and pass that player, player as a parameter to that base component, right? So you will have... You'll have a situation where, well, think about it this way. You you played your turn, right? Once you played your turn, an API call gets sent back to the server, right? The server will go back and say, whose turn is it? Assume that this play game can, can be played mm -hmm. by five people at the same time, right? So yeah. the server is giving you back whose turn is it? That component that's man managing this is sending down to that component, to the player component, hey, take this, it's this guy's turn. And then you handle, you know, which which box you need to light up with fire and all that kind of stuff, right? So despite, regardless of that mechanism, the idea here is to be able to go and say, okay, this is a wrapper around the native or external Unity components, which is this crappy TMP, TXT thing, right? Yeah. So now you don't, like your upstream services or upstream components, they don't have to know about that guy anymore. All they know about is that you have a, something called player base component that they pull in, right? And that they pass a parameter to it. And then it figures out on its own how to kind of render that name. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, so, yeah. so t let me just ask you this. How do I pass this value? Like you see how you sat, you sat this value that takes equal Hassan. We want to just yeah. expose this value. That's all. Okay. Okay, cool. Let's 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 create the other component that references this component. Sure. So we can uh, see that where where would I where would I create that yeah in the project? Um mm. because if we we need to somehow check it doesn't matter what we if, if we for instance what because we will have we will have two components right one for the right. one plane one for the other yes but that's later upstream like think that's yeah, another component that will call two of these so that's that's later later yeah. in the game right for this one it's so simple this guy is just all it's doing is that you're giving it a player name and it's rendering it in something that looks like a rock that's it uh, okay Okay. Okay. So when it starts up, something will call this base component and yep. set the name. Yep. Okay. That's, yep. That's simple. Let's just. Why don't we just create? Is it possible um, that you set this as a property with a getter and a setter, like this yeah. public label? What if you set it up with a getter and a setter, like a get set, just a normal property? Would that work? Okay. Because you, because this is this is what you're referencing. Yeah. Or you can, yeah, you can. Sorry, you can. Um, nice, nice. Then, 
yeah, then whatever references this will have to say dot label dot text equals this, yeah. but then we need to we need to make sure this is not null. Yeah. Um one way we can do that in Unity. Yeah. Let's say let's say we say this player base. Um it will always will it always need a reference to a component like this? It it will this. always so so let's say at some point in time you and I went and said, hey, we don't want to use that text mesh pro. We need to use some other external component to render text. It will be just this one change and nothing upstream and your game will okay. change because the okay. you already abstracted away the dependency on that external non-owned component in your game, right? So it could change at any point in time. It doesn't matter because so so I see I see what you're saying. We need to we need to find a way to say okay, let me ask you this. Can you can you start the component programmatically like this start method that you just uh, created? Can yeah. another component programmatically start that? Yeah, if you have a public method on it. I mean, you can call okay. that public method whatever. But okay. start will because this is a mono behavior when you click start in uh, when you when the application starts up, it will automatically pull that start. Right. And and That's we like also a, yeah. And we also don't want to expose a property that belongs to an external model, right? So we need to somehow basically do a thing like your property should just be a string and then whatever happens with yeah. that string underneath it doesn't That's matter it. Doesn't so matter. So, yeah. so so maybe maybe something like this do this do a property and then string uh property like just create a new property yeah. and then string and then just say player name player name yeah okay and then inside the uh set Function yeah. open up a scope inside this set. Yeah. Yep, just like that. <laughs> yeah, just exactly like that. Yeah. Inside that oh, set, okay. now call that private. You can now call that private label and set the value on it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. There you go. I'll uh we can we can yeah, yeah. there's a way yeah, to yeah. make sure that this thing is never yeah, uh, yeah. Null. and we can return the label of text right you could just type value sure that works too yep Va uh, value yeah if you just type value like in get just type value instead of label.txt just type value Seriously. oh mm. Doesn't like it. Uh, open a scope and type return value. Let's see what happens. Yeah. Oh, I need that. oh, dumb. I think it's on the set. The value's on the set. Okay, yeah, let's just yeah. do label.txt, yeah. Okay. Because you know in the set, type value in the set, type the word value in the set. Yeah. Look. It's reserved to this property that you're sitting. Yeah. I can nice. That. Nice. Yeah. Okay, perfect. Now, now we just want to test it. That's a base component. Okay. We just need to test okay. it. Go and say, how do we do so, that? So it's, it's basically like a wrapper around. It's almost like a broker. It's abstraction. Okay. It's, it's literally a broker. This is okay. what it is. Okay. You know? Awesome. Okay, cool. Now I'm going to do one trick. To make sure yeah. because now you can imagine we don't this thing you can no longer because we made it private yeah you can no longer set it here right you You'll can't you won't it, be able to see it here. ah but unity has some some magic ways you can you can yeah you can you can get if as long as you 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 have a component on a game object you can go and find the other components but Obviously, this this takes um, this is resource resource heavy. Mm -hmm. You don't want to do it like in a per frame basis. But what you can do is you say required component, mm -hmm. right? And then you say type of TMP, and then we say this 
label. Yeah. This 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 component, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now what this will do, if I go back. Uh let's wait for it. Now even if I try to remove this, it will mm -hmm. tell me I can't. You, you can't can. remove it because that script is dependent on it. It, nice. it can't exist. So nice. what that gives us, so obviously if I if I remove this and I remove that, yeah, I take our base component and I put it on there. Can't add script behavior. The script class can't be abstract. What? <laughs> Why is it saying that? Why is it saying that? Let's see, it should work. Yeah. See, this is that you know, unity. Uh, no man, it's supposed to add it. Okay, fine. Maybe maybe it does it after you add the maybe because you added this condition, it's freaking out. Okay, I'll, I'll I'll figure that one. But it's supposed to it's supposed to add your component and the other one. Yeah, yeah. The one that it depends on. Okay, do me a so, favor. Get rid of that player base component one because it's confusing. We don't need okay. that. Yeah. That will be programmatically generated or set up in yeah. a certain way. So okay. So now we just want to test it. Like if you have this component, we need to kind of test being able to create a different component that will rely on this. And this different component will basically allow us to uh, pass these parameters to it. So this is just a, like this. You can commit that code. That's that's basis, yeah. you know, basic player. Of course, we need to kind of come in, in, in the next session and basically go and say, we need to make this actually look like a rock. We need some assets and some stuff around this, you know. But OK, hear me out. Let's create a dummy, like just a demo component that will utilize that player base component. OK. We so create you, that in our... you can put it in views and create a new folder and just call it components. Yeah, cool. And then create a folder under that one. Just call it uh, delete me. Okay. Yep. And then let's create a delete me component that will basically. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, leverage that. So delete me component. Component.cs. I'm starting to get the hang of it. I see what you're doing. Mm -hmm. It's 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 if you have a certain pattern in mind, it might be a lot easier for people to kind of but we'll see. You you know, you love this thing. I love that you love this thing. So now I get to kind of yeah. So okay, now can you actually reference the player base component in here? You should be able to, I think. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So I can add a private player base component. Nice, nice. Uh, and just call it player base. There it is. Nice. We need to somehow, now in here, in the start, go ahead and set up that parameter. And let's see what happens. Okay. Cool. Yep. Uh, player base dot. What do you have? Dot something, right? Dot, uh, what did you call it? Player name? Player name, yeah. Boom. And just, just call it anything. Oh my God. Now you're typing like Golang. Great. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> that, that was a wild. I, I watched that video to learn. <laughs> yeah. People were like, you know, you don't know what you're doing. I was like, I just learned it two hours ago. You know, <laughs> what do you want? Yeah. Me? All right. Okay. So that, if we run the game, that yeah. Okay. So, mm -hmm. Yeah. This will this will be null now because there's no way of it knowing. Oh, you have to pull um, it. That's fine. Try to yeah. pull it in. Uh -huh. Okay. So I'm just gonna say serialized field. So so serialized field just makes it available in the in the inspector so that it can be safe. Yeah. Or you can just make this public, but without the get set. Yeah. If you put the get set, it won't show in the inspector either. Okay. Let's uh, let's pull it in just the same way you pulled okay. the text. Yeah. And then link it up. This is beautiful. Okay, cool. The so, theory of UI is not really that crazy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> and I've played around with this um, like so many times to get 
to get a good architecture behind this because um i mean you can you can do it like this but if you forget yeah. to add this for instance or if you do this programmatically and, and don't yeah. add that yeah so now because this this component is on this game object i can just drag this game object there and it will find that component on check mm, 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 if it's on a different game object or yeah, if it's yeah. on the same game object you can just drag it yeah i see so so now so, so okay so where is where is your your delete me component canvas you're supposed to have a canvas for this one right so canvas is just one yeah, yeah it's your um your screen like, what you're going to work or the whole screen with. you can have multiple but they 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 scale differently and it's like you can have a you can have a 3d canvas in your game and you can also have a 2d canvas i see, for the, I see, for I see. The ui you see okay let's run it let's see if yeah, it's so everything under here will have the same canvas. I'm, I'm gonna need to circle back with you on this one but uh, but keep going i'm 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 good this is great okay okay it's complaining because i think no this... risk it says the player label piece. is yeah label is null. okay so because we have required component on here sorry mm -hmm. i should have added this like i said it's supposed to when you add player based components it's supposed to add Texas pro this component as well meaning in the awake or or start mm -hmm. uh, you can say label and because it's yep. on the same game object, give it some say, value. Yeah. Get component of type TMP, TMP text. text. And that's all you need to do. Okay. I do it in a way because when you can in start, you can you know that is there because away gap is before start. Okay, perfect. So this, yeah, this this guarantees that that component is there. It's never gonna be null. Yeah. It's never gonna be null. Yeah. There's something to this. Mm, so that's how this works. Interesting. Okay. Also, another nice thing about Unity, it's kind of got like hot reload built into it. So you can so that's save it builds. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah, I mean, I mean, you games just keep it not... running. Yeah, yeah I mean, games are... nice. Okay, okay. And that's you running the game. Technically, you're basically yeah. running. It. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there we go. Yeah, so that's, that's one way we can do it. Yeah, that's a base component to me. Standardized looks fine. You know, <laughs> the one thing there's a couple of things I have for you. You know the. So the canvas, can you have a canvas calling another canvas or is the canvas is like the container? It's like the page that shows everything. Can you repeat that quick? Yeah, so the canvas is like what? Is it the container of everything? Yeah, so if you look in the 3D view, let me just go 3D. Ah. It's this, this block. So, so this will be the screen yeah um, that the player is change like, yeah yeah if i was to change this uh to be that yeah that's the screen okay this actual white box will also change but everything everything um this canvas is just it like you can see all it it's just a game object that has a canvas yeah, yeah. component yep um a canvas scaler which tells you how to scale okay when screen to with screen sizes and stuff graphics right. ray cost uh, that takes care of events for gotcha. and all that yeah so 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 inside the canvas you have this player base component right mm -hmm. so that's this guy where is but this is for your so so obviously this will be um the call you'll have this you'll have this even in another window so i would okay. normally yeah, I would normally for for my for my pages. Yep, yep. I would have sub sub game objects here, so I'll have a page game object, you know, like a main game. Yeah. Page, whatever. Yep. That you swap out, like you can yep. have a you can have a sign on screen. Yep. 
and yep. and of course that's just a game object you can animate yep. that thing. yep that's the page yeah and then yep. and just swap out like that gotcha and then, and then you would have your base component you nest that end. under there so okay can you instead of nesting the player base component we need to nest the delete me component that calls the player yeah. base component you see that structure that's the point mm -hmm. okay so i'm all removed from there mm -hmm. um this player base is, is this a container or would it only be a text ever it's it's more than just text it's a text that you pass and it renders something within that text like when you say button base you're passing in a text mm -hmm. but you're showing a button with the text inside of it it's abstracting okay. both the data and the rendering of of that external component ideally your page should never be calling a a a native or external component meaning like your page should never call that tmp text ever right because you already abstracted mm -hmm. that away right and your page should not know you even have that all your page knows is that it needs to call a component and this component calls a base component that base component is, is that guy that you just built so yeah. let me ask you this can you drag the delete me component which is just a test component under the main page component and then the structure should be main page delete me player base component and then that text that would be basically the proper structure of this page okay so on the page mm -hmm, delete mm -hmm. me yeah grab that guy in uh, yeah there we go so so your delete me component doesn't know anything about oh, right. text tmp right no it doesn't okay it doesn't know because it will sorry i was running this now yeah you're um, fine it it only references that nice yeah but even nice. like like i i realize now with what you're saying as well you know yep. we, sorry i i that's the one thing about unity while you're running and you make changes yep if you stop it will it will revert yep so you yep. Can't, yeah anyway so i just need to redo that again yeah uh, you should you should create a yeah main game page and then you need a delete me component and then under that delete me component you're going to add the yeah that guy should go yeah yeah i can make these will this player base only have the responsibility of that one text yeah that's that's all it does it's a it's a dummy broker it doesn't know anything like this is why it needs to be so so where so your main game page should have a delete me component underneath it right yeah because the yeah, delete like me that. component is the one that's calling that yeah and and we can yeah we can technically make these two game objects one because all this is is just that image yeah and these the sticks and all can be under there right but i mean it, it doesn't it doesn't matter because then then it will always just be one just the text i mean it's gonna have a it's gonna have a little bit more to it than just the box it's gonna look like a block but it's all part of that okay. base component right yeah. um let's see here um I'll, I'll make this yeah we can keep it like separate their name oh you can rename things yeah it's literally just a, a name it's it's nothing to do with the code nothing so nice. this thing yeah um, nice nice yeah that's like a display name and player base component yeah this is it can you yeah. can you push this in a pull request it's probably going to be a huge because unity generates all that junk <laughs> yeah but uh i think you created that um, repository with the unity ignore uh git ignore so right it will, it will actually save us a lot of space yep 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 so um, just just to, to visualize things uh etienne let me go back here um sure. this is basically what we're doing you have a canvas right and this canvas has a a delete me component which is a component that we're going to be building together 
And this delete me component is basically referencing the the one that we built today, which is player base component. Right now, this guy is dependent on external. So see, these are this is the dependency, this is the purpose, and then this is the exposure layer. Right. Now, this guy can depend on whatever, just the same way you're building brokers and stuff like that. It's the exact same idea. There is no magic there. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay, my friend. I guess the next time, you know, you and I hang out, we need to do that turn-based component. We might need to put some, uh, some a little bit of kind of action in this one. Like, we need to kind of make it look like an actual rock, whatever assets that we need to use to make that happen. Yeah. But then we need to have fire in here. So this will be just fire that lights up. And then that player turn component will be responsible on placing the fire on top of the block. So if it's your turn, it will put the fire there. If it's the other person's mm. turn, it will put the fire there. See how see how this is going? Yeah. It's really simple. It's really primitive. That makes it easy for anyone to go and modify that system and, and, and play with it and all that. Testing will be interesting. We need to just drive it somehow. So we'll see yeah. what, that, what that's going to look like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, my friend. Yeah. Awesome, man. Oh, my God. Paul, how long uh, have you been here? Hey, guys. I've been here oh. for a while, actually. I've just been watching. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, saw a, I saw a comment. I'm sorry, yeah. dude. Oh, my God. He did send a lot of... Oh, my God. <laughs> sending messages for like 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, yeah. Paul. Paul was just sitting down there in the den. <laughs> you know, just know like... So, so <laughs> Paul, you know, so so we're just designing a game exactly with the same exact concepts, and uh, yeah. you know, yeah. it's 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 very interesting to see how just Etienne kind of. Can you go back to your uh, Unity uh, app, Etienne? Uh, really? Sorry. Uh, Infinity. <laughs> I heard. Oh yeah, god, yeah. that's scary! An unlimited Ooh. number of Hassans. <laughs> Paul, you never developed a game before, have you? Uh, so I built a voxel engine using Unity. And, yeah, but how long um, ago was that? I was. Uh, it's got to be at least five years ago now. Okay, um, you know the standard, right? Look yeah. at what he did. He built a base component. And his base component has just a parameter that he's passing to it. And then he's using it. He's calling it from a, something called delete me components. Just as simple as that. So did you see where I was going in the, uh, in the oh, chat in the messages? Chat. Let's see what I, said. Shall I relay my yeah. thoughts on that? Uh, yeah, so really, yeah. Yeah. Go my ahead. thinking was if you treated a Unity component sort of like a controller in a web application and had that call into your services, then you could build standard compliant services. Mm -hmm. So you could have a player service, for example, mm -hmm. that the interface on that spoke player components. So imagine you got full, um, I was going to say full CRUD, but you don't really CRUD components in this sense. But you'd have on your player service, you'd have operations like move. Mm -hmm. So you, you'd pass it, say, a position or a vector or something, and then you'd pass it the player component. Right. So it would be a bit like passing your component into your player service, and that would be your processing service, effectively, if necessary, or underneath. And then underneath that, you'd have your um, foundation service if you needed that much complexity. So that's how I would have approached the standard with regards to Unity Gaming. But what you seem to be doing, which is kind of interesting, because this concept doesn't mm -hmm. lend itself very yeah. nicely, if you like, to the standard, but it works the way that yeah. you've done it, is that you're modeling actually the tree itself like a yep. set of standard services, right? Yep. yep. Um, which I thought was an interesting approach. That's how, <laughs> that's, that's how we're building the Blazor apps. Yeah, yeah, and it's, there, I had my reservations about that as well, but I say reservations, that's probably a, the incorrect word to use. It, it was more, I was surprised you took the approach you took, because I would have said, okay, I've got a thing that's my UI thing that I want to manipulate, and then I've got some business logic, which is separate from that. What I want to do is I want to pass the thing that I want to manipulate into my business logic, have that manipulate it, and spit me back that thing back out in its new modified state. Mm. 
Does that make sense? So that's kind of how I was, much like we're doing with Odate and Neo, right? Yeah, you're 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 treating the component as the model, as the contract. Yes, the component I'm... is data. Because if you think about what your game engine is doing with it, right? Uh -huh. The the stuff that the game engine actually saves as the entities that yeah. we think of when we're doing um, non-game programming, yeah. our entities are our data objects. There are mm -hmm. there are anemic objects. You don't want to put any business logic in your object. Right. What you're doing yeah. here is you're saying, well, and and uh, Unity has this concept of a component, and components have logic attached to them through the entity component system. What I would have done is I would have said, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to attach my standardized service to it. And that standardized service is going to provide the functionality so that the component itself, the unity thing, can remain being the entity and remain being anemic. That keeps mm -hmm. your object tree in unity as simple as possible. And this is what I was thinking about doing with my voxel engine code, because I think I still have it somewhere. I was mm -hmm. going to try and dig it out. I just haven't had the time to do it yet. I was going to rebuild the, um, I've got like a world generator that I built out using um, noise functions. Mm -hmm. I, um, I took an existing C++ noise library um, and translated all of that into C sharp. Uh -huh. <laughs> translated all that into C sharp and provided yeah. a mechanism where um, I don't think I quite got around to building the visual designer, but you could literally draw diagrams and it would chain noise modules together. Yeah. Um, but I built all of the code to allow you to chain the modules together to build essentially a noise module tree. And then that would allow you to, you call in for X, Y, Z, give me a value. And it would give you back a noise value back from the tree. And this is how world dynamic world generation works in games. I don't know if you've ever played you with world be, generation. But I'm still thinking about your statement. You won't be able to treat the components oh! as, as a a uh as an entity or data because the component in and of itself does orchestrations mm. of other components so the component itself has to go and call like look up look at this player turn component do you see it this guy what it's doing is that it's going and saying give me the ability to use a player component and a turn component and then orchestrate them together to light up like a fire kind of action above the player that I am told to choose. They will be told to choose that by a match component, which also talks to something called move block component. See, See to, to my mind, what you did there was yeah. what you constantly complain that developers do. What? So you say that the technology is telling you how to function. That's not how it works. No, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. There is, <laughs> there is, there is a back end of a front end. There's a component. Like, let me just tell you this. When you have a component and you click on a button and you want that button to go disabled because yeah. you, you want to prevent the user from clicking, clicking, clicking. This is what I call BFF, back end of front end, which is basically the bare minimum logic that we have in our components that basically allows us to kind of do that switch that's why we write unit tests for our ui components because they have uh, ui logic in them right so when, when you when you disable a button in blazer mm -hmm. do you where do you put the logic that does the enable disable switch do you put that in the thing that contains the button yes well okay. not, the, not the thing that contains the button not the thing that contains the button. This other thing. Watch this. This is you, actually you put something. it in some sort of view service, right? No, 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 no. Just wait, 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 wait. So O triple S. If you look at the registration component, I, I have to admit, right? I mean, you say I know the standard, right? I've been yep. dealing with the standard from a back end point of view. Yeah. My plan was when I get round to obviously everybody's seen at this point who watches your channel has seen my big game plan. Yeah. At some point, I'm going to hit my content management stuff and my workflow stuff, and that's going to be UI heavy. Yep. At that point, I'm going to be wanting to tear the standard apart and rebuild it because Good it's luck. just going to be absolute hell. Yeah, I can see it coming because I Good know luck. what. Good luck. Yeah. So, so look, <laughs> look at this. This component here is using few things. It's going and using a base component for a text box, mm. right? That's that's what that's what uh, Etienne just created. But it also is calling the view service. Mm. 
the service. So the view service is giving you the data. Right. So and does the, that component actually have any business logic in it, or does it yeah, just course. make calls like a broker does into no, the service? No, 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 no. It does not just make calls. It goes and says, "Hey, on button click, go ahead and change the state of that text box to be disabled," and that's what we test. Mm -hmm. Right. See, I, I wouldn't have done that. I would have said, hey, the, the service, mm. um, the, the contract that the service speaks is is the component that contains all of these controls. And it mm -hmm. intrinsically knows how these work, because then from a unit testing point of view, mm. you go over to Visual Studio, you write your business logic all in that service. You can unit test that by literally just building one of these components and setting all the properties on it. We can unit test this, too. Would be unit. <laughs> like if you look at this part in here, I, I see yeah. what you're going to, but if you look at this part here, hold on. Watch this. That's how we basically go and say, hey, when this student registration component, when you actually click the button, like in here, we basically say, where is it? Should should display submitting status and disable controls. So I basically go and say when this call happens. Look at this. I'm pretending, by the way, this is a nice gotcha. I'm pretending that the call is taking a while. So I can test the status that is actually showing submitting dot, 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 which is a middle state between you clicking the button and you actually finishing the, the little mm -hmm. thing. And in that little yeah. mid state, you're basically going and saying, ensure that this is disabled. Interesting. You got to go back to my Blazor series, son. It's only 15 videos. <laughs> actually i think it's more than that i think it's actually more than that i i haven't touched it in a while but i know it hit some crazy numbers like i know oh there it is watch this it hit ten thousand views it's it's weird for something like that but i think it's uh hold on if you go to this blazer series i should probably update some of it oh it's only 17 videos two hours and a half each <laughs> It's not, an hour. it's not two hours and a half. No, I'm, I'm still going through it. <laughs> yeah, it's about an hour, an hour and a half. Some guy just went over there and went through it. He's like, listen, dude, you've been, I know you don't know this, but you've been a part of my life in the last five months. I've been just going through that series and taking notes and trying things out. And I just wanted to let you know, this is great. I love it. I was like, great. This is great. I'm, I should probably go and add more to it because the, you see the first video that I pushed out when Blazer was really, really new that nobody was doing anything with it. And I think the last video I pushed here was validation components. I've, I've turned into a completely different person, like late 2021, which basically two years in the progress of I, kind of putting something like that out there. Like, like, like I, I've turned into a completely different person in the process of building this system. But anyway, what, I, what I'm trying to tell you is you actually haven't visited that side of the standard yet. And I really think you should. If you go all the way down, this is the end-to-end -end part. So if you go all the way down to web applications under the exposure layer. So all this is under what I call user interfaces, all of this under exposures, right? Yeah, that's, that's fair to say. I mean, I, I honestly, I haven't looked at the front-end side of it. The way I, I kind of had it in my head that I would rebuild my Voxel engine is because I've got effectively a set of services i don't think they're actually called that at the moment because they're not written to the standard but i've got a set of services that stack together right. um, essentially um i think of them as what i call a chunk provider yeah so i generate a small set of data and that provides yeah. me with a chunk which is a portion of the virtual world that i'm building out and then i repeat that for a different chunk and i do that in a loop three-dimensionally so yeah. I end up with volumetric partitioned space, essentially, where I'm generating these portions for. And essentially, for each chunk that I generate that's visible, I generate an object in the Unity object tree, and I attach the generated chunk to it. And then the, the whenever something happens to that chunk as a user operation, I pass that back into a thing that the component depends on, which is my Unity. This is what I was thinking of. This would be my standard service right yeah yeah so an operation would happen the click event and the thing that it happens to and what i essentially the operation details would be okay. passed as parameters into the service the service would provide the operation functionality modify the chunk in whatever way was suitable and then give it back to the component the component yep. would just say 
head. Render. I know how to talk. I know how to yep. talk to the engine. Yeah. Mm, so yep. I deal with rendering. Well, sorry, I deal with the business logic and Unity deals with rendering. And in between, all I'm doing is I'm just setting properties on a thing that the engine depends on ultimately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so with with regards to things like labels, for example, buttons. I kind of never imagined that I'd actually be setting a button as enabled or disabled. I'd have some under the bonnet DTO or something that the button's properties would be dependent upon, if you like. So there'd be this two-way communication. And what I would do is I would modify that data object and manage it through services and then give it back to the component. And the component would be, then be responsible for monitoring the state of that object and updating everything <laughs> internally. So it was that object that was... Do you see what I yeah. mean? Um, yeah. But I do recognize, however, that that may yeah. be drastically different to how you've approached Blazor, and therefore that's why you've taken the approach you've taken with Unity, which is why I was quite surprised. Yeah, because... we could try it this way. I'm sorry, Jin, you're, you're going to <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay. Okay. I, yeah, I, I, I tried something similar in 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 Unity because if you think about Blazor, right? Blazor has something built in that we don't but that we don't have in unity and that's data binding mm, right? right you get data binding in the in the editor itself if you're creating editor you are but you Does don't have, data have like binding. an mdm system it uh, you you can you can create your own one and this is what i've been playing around with and trying right. to see where it could fit into the standard because um maybe i could share maybe i can quickly show to remind us on there you go uh so this is like a, a, a just a project I worked on from our last discussion. I think yeah. the first discussion. Nice. So basically, it's the same thing. You have pages. You have a page, and then and this have... page. So so just hear me out. Like I, I've been playing around with this, and obviously, this is just a stab at it. But yeah. if you think about it, according to the standard, yeah. a component or a view component, not a base component, a view component references your view service yeah right some way like some way and and for me a view should only represent it should always it should always show you exactly what the data is that you right that your system that, is in right? that was my right. my thinking was like right. like a html web page is just data right you, you right. shouldn't be like executing javascript it, off of it you should have something yeah, it shouldn't have that. right yeah. But, yeah, but, 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 but who's doing the linking? Like, like you have to understand there is... That's there the are... problem of the engine. <laughs> yeah, see, see, that's the thing. If you rely on some magic that's happening on the engine, this is where you fall into that slippery slope of, I don't know how it works, right? I don't know how it works, right? This is the thing. It has to be... Do very we need to present. have an Odata Neo conversation where we talk about <laughs> compiler magic? <laughs> By I'm way, just saying. <laughs> so, just, so just hear me out. Hear me out. Even that magic, we go and abstract it away behind the broker and honor our standardization so we can test it, we can understand it. Here's the thing, though. Components, components themselves can come into three different types, right? There are components that don't have integration with view services, right? Like in this very example, that player turn component, it doesn't have a view service. Look at this. If I go back here, this component here in and of itself doesn't talk to any service. Watch this. You see this guy? This is like a dead end function. This guy right here, right? It doesn't talk to anything. It just knows that it needs to abstract away this guy and maybe add a couple of things on top, right? The same thing happens here and the same thing happens here. Think about this guy as an orchestration component that basically goes and says, I can give you the capability of turning on and off the light on mm. a particular player. Mm. So what this guy is going to be doing is that it's going to go and say, get, get, make me two of these, one for every okay. player in the game. And then this guy goes and calls the service. The service comes back and says, oh, it's Paul's turn. So it will go and pass that ID down here and it says, oh, it's Paul's turn. Then I need to light up this component. So it's doing a tiny bit of logic, but it's only the ones that's enough for, like you'll never see a component go and say, convert model from string to integer or any of that stuff. It's not gonna go and say, go ahead and map a model from a, a view model into an API model. That's never gonna happen, right? But there is 
truly there is logic in the UI itself. And if you put it in a service and you pass the components as a whole to that, now you're handing yourself to another problem because the components have methods in them. Like when you say, if you have a base component that has a click functionality that you pass a delegate to it, that's not, that's not an anemic model. That's not a data component. That's an actual routine. Yeah. I was kind of looking at it though, that if you treated the components like um, controllers in our API layers, um, that would be the pages well, here. Mm -hmm. go ahead, you go could ahead. say that they were simply pass-throughs, right? And much like our brokers, they're pass-throughs. They're they're there as a an interface between yep. the internal and the external, right? Yeah, yeah. As our exposers. So what we're doing is we're saying, hey, the engine is a thing that depends on our logic. So we're a dependency to mm -hmm. the engine, mm -hmm. and then our logic will have, say, dependencies on. I don't know. Let's say it's a multiplayer game. It has a mm -hmm. dependency on a game server, right? Mm -hmm. So our business logic will have a broker somewhere that is a game server or some piece of the game server's API broker. Right. Okay, so the the responsibility of the game engine is to deal with drawing stuff. The responsibility yep. of our business logic is to set the state so that the game engine knows what it's drawing. That's my understanding. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. everything to do with state is mm -hmm. data. That's, that's how I'm looking at it. So if you've got anything in the game engine's framework that is essentially code, you've probably screwed up somewhere following the standard, right? Because mm -hmm. in theory, anything to do with, and I, I think the same should apply with Blazor as well. Mm -hmm. So Blazor is a rendering engine, right? So mm -hmm. it draws stuff. Okay, so what do we, how we tell it to draw stuff is business logic. Mm -hmm. What it actually draws is essentially what our business logic returns as data. Yeah. That's kind of how I'm looking at it. Now, I might be oversimplifying this because I think you're right. Things like click handlers, at some point, you've got to wire up a function somehow. So you've got to do some kind of event handling. So there has to be some logic yep. somewhere. But yep. is that not much the same as, for example, when we set up an API, we have to set up dependency injection and we have to say to stuff, hey, I'm registering all these services and I'm um, wiring up all of these events by calling listen yeah, but, to but you're not, all these orchestration but, services. Yeah, but you're not doing that on a model, on an anemic model. You're not passing an anemic model that says, hey, it has a function in it. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But we, we all we have in our... Let's, let's look at, say, the anatomy of a Unity component, right? Mm -hmm. So a Unity component is in itself something that we attach to essentially an empty object to give it right. some kind of behavior. Okay? Right. So um, in that context, <laughs> do you want to say hi to Hassan again? Yeah. again say hi. hi. Hi, Alice. Is this Alice? This is Lucy. This is Lucy. Okay. One. Lucy is the one that comes all the time. Okay. Hi, yeah, Lucy. How are you, <laughs> how are you doing? Princess. Yeah, you are. You look like a princess. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> right. Daddy's got to do some work. Okay. okay. See you in a bit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, she's mm. wonderful, really, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's, she's cute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the way that I'm kind of looking at it is, I'm thinking, okay, if, for example, um, thinking about how the Unity engine works, right? That mm -hmm. component, that behavior that we're attaching to the game ob object, every public property that we attach to it is a thing that we're intending to manipulate right now in this case what we're intending to manipulate is like controls like labels for example or buttons mm -hmm. or um it might be something like um let's say you're building a 3d game it, you might attach a mesh to it for example a mesh renderer right right um so in those situations um what you don't want to do is put any of the logic that manipulates say a mesh in the component you want yep. that in a service that sits behind that component. Yeah. Yep. yep. Um, so if, if if we follow kind of like the mechanism that I think you've been following, now you feel free to correct me if I'm wrong, right? Yeah, you sorry. would create a child component of that thing in the tree, and then you would put the logic in there. So you've still got that child, that service effectively in the tree. But I'm saying, hey, the whole tree is data. It's it's it, we shouldn't it, be mapping it, it out as standard it can, components it can't it has a click functionality it has a like mm -hmm. in a realistic enterprise application these components have their own functionality that does let me let me let me give you an example mm -hmm. uh when you click on a on a on a burger menu a hamburger menu right yeah. and it drops down 
a little menu out that that's UI logic. That's not data. That's not business logic, right? How do you do that? Right. You do that by having a base component underneath that has a menu and you're yeah. basically triggering this capability from that function. You need to go and test that. And you're not calling a service. You're not. There is no data processing going on here. Right. Yeah. This is you're still in the browser. Right. So the, the, the data object, in this case, the component is receiving uh -huh. an event notification. Right. Uh -huh. So as I see it, we can wire that event notification up um, yeah. in the component. And yeah. say, hey, we're just going to call a service method here, much like a broker. Why? Right? But why? Why do you have to go all the way to a service when it's not data related? I think the the fundamental difference yeah. here is that I, I see what you're doing. You're basically going and saying, you know, there is something very powerful about what you're saying. You're basically saying, irregardless of what my UI looks like, I need an abstract service that subscribes to an interface of a component, and it basically does this. Yeah. Inter, inter interactions between these things. And it's much easier to test drive, much, much easier to test drive, which you're not wrong. But mm -hmm. it, when you get to the UI, let's explore that together. I'm just telling you what, I don't know, 40 something enterprise systems have built. This is what makes it simple. You know, maybe we're gonna run into a hurdle down the road with that approach that you're talking about. But then again, the standard is that. It's Paul and Etienne and people like that. We're going and actually trying things out. Not showing people some kitty, hello world, oh, look at this new quick feature and then run away and get, get a million views. That's not what this is, right? We're actually here for people who wants to sit. I, I know a guy out there that keeps sending me this message. If I miss one day without pushing a video, it'd be like, well, my lunch is ruined because that's what I sit down for lunch <laughs> and watch. And just learn from whatever you guys are saying, <laughs> because because you also have to understand, like just just a lot of people. Do you remember Casper? I was telling this to Casper the other day. I said to him, "It's not even about what we're building, you know. It's about giving people an a, a, an entertainable entertainment while giving them information. We're joking, we're poking at each other, we're making fun of each other. Oh, Suffering. you're." <laughs> yeah, just, just just suffering in the process of entertaining the audience. But but anyway, listen, I want to try this yeah. out. I think this idea might be. I actually do like it, but I want to see if yeah. that actually yeah. would work because you're gonna you're gonna hit a brick wall. You know, when you start having nested base components, are you gonna include yeah. that in what you're passing in? Oh, it's gonna get so bad so fast. But we'll see. I, yeah. I'd love nested, to see it. nested base. Yeah. Components. So under the standard, we shouldn't be having more than one, maybe a push, two levels of inheritance, right? Or are you talking about nesting within a tree? Wait, did you just say inheritance? You know, there is no inheritance. In the you said that, push. not me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just went with it, right? <laughs> By the way, the way, the way I curb inheritance is that I go and say you can only have one level at an abstract component. Like you, we will yeah. inherit from entity framework, but you will never see a service inheriting from another service because once you open that door good luck you know you have magic code that's <laughs> amazing that yeah. yeah and right. I, I swear to god guys i'm not kidding you i remember like nine years ago i worked in a company where you know the folks had nine levels of inheritance nine levels of inheritance and then i, I asked the I've got a service in my current production stack. It's five levels of inheritance deep, and it has nine generic parameters at one level. <laughs> it's beautiful. Like, it's a work of art. It's an absolute maintenance nightmare, yeah. and it has like a gazillion <laughs> unit tests that are needed. Yeah. By, <laughs> by, by, by the way, by the way, the standard is it has a hint of anti uh, dr uh, dry the don't repeat yourself principle it has a hint yeah. of anti that because once engineers go and say oh don't repeat yourself so let me build something that's easy to write but it's a nightmare to read and understand <laughs> that's where 99% of the enterprise systems out there are built on oh let me write this real quick make everything generic develop 90 apis in like a month let me get my promotion and my reward and run away and good luck to the suckers that are going to come later and try to understand that. No. Mm. We're going to take more time writing the system and mm. then the people that will come to maintain it will take a second 
to actually push in a new feature. So anyway, yeah. listen, guys, this is a great discussion, you know, as usual. Thank you, Paul, and sorry for putting you in jail down there for a while. But, uh, you know, I, I, I honestly genuinely didn't see you. I was on uh, when I'm with Etienne, I put it on all full screen and I'm just oh, really cool. with him. Because what we should do is we should have a co another call like this where I talk you through what I did in my voxel generation yes. stuff. Because where yes. I hit a wall was I felt that um, particularly the chunk generation bit would benefit from being converted to uh, compute shaders and being done on the GPU. And so if I had written it to the standard, I could just give that to like a GPU expert and say, hey, rewrite that so that it's done over there instead. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so that's why I kind of stopped because the CPU performance at the time wasn't good enough to keep up with what I was doing. But you were it's limited a good... by the technology of your time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it, it's a good test project though to see in principle. I'd, like, I'd how... love to see it. I'd love to see it. By the yeah. way, just so you guys know, like there's a whole bunch of projects up in the air in the standard community. Like there is the the gaming development. There's always a guardian or a person that's driving it. Like. There is this game standardizing game development, which I really love. I really love this project. I'm so happy we kind of we were able to get like a base component, you know, just as simple as that. Just for people to understand, there is the translations project. There's like about 12 translations, Spanish and French and Arabic, and from every other nation, you know, people are kind of translating. There's that project. There's the tracing, tracing and telemetry project with Chris to Dutui. So we're running into that realm. There's the security. Uh, project which is Paul kind of playing around with on his own. I'd love to see where Great that goes. Stuff. Yeah, security project. And now I just started. Just literally, uh, there is, there's, there's a big backlog. You know, rollbacks and uh, 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 tracing, and just you know, someone at work just popped up throttling, and I did it the same way we do try catch. It's gonna blow your minds. I'm gonna bring them into one of these sessions. So there's throttling going on. And there's also, like, you'd think I'd just be like, oh, that's enough. You know, we have enough in our hands. Let's just get this done first. No, I'm going and venturing into kind of showing people what it's like to build standard compliant system and Rust and Go and all of these different languages just to play around and say, okay, I want to build a damn object and I want a storage broker and I want to basically call the storage broker and see what happens. And uh, you guys don't. Nice. You don't know this because you're in a community where everyone is writing C sharp.net, but some of the mm -hmm. languages that are out there are a nightmare. Like literally, and I'm not just saying that because I'm used to C sharp.net, like literally the language is dictating and telling you what's uppercase, what's lowercase. It's literally telling you where to put your little uh, uh, open close parentheses. Yeah. Like, like, let me show you. This is one of my favorite. Check this out. If I go here, the language would literally tell you you're making a mistake. Let me do this. Was it control shift? Yeah, there you go. Watch this. This is my favorite part. So this is a simple method, right? If you do this, it will tell you error. Whoa. Yeah, screw that. Yeah. Whoever wrote it's... that, they should be shot. They, sh they I swear <laughs> to God. And you know, like, yeah. like, look at this. Look at this. Like what kind of... What kind of stupid language would tell you? Yeah. It's 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 enforcing it's enforcing people to write in a certain way. That's you can't you can't add thing. your style like yeah. I mean if if yeah. I, I, like I said in the, business. That's I, I get that there's language languages business. like um, yeah. YML, for example, where indenting yeah. matters, right? Because it's defining scope because they don't have braces. But that I mean, like you've got braces. Does it matter where they go? Yeah. And and hey, if you want to go and do something like like brokers brokers storages like that because god forbid you have you know nope you can't do that it's only one package at a time so what do you wow. so what's you your new option line after the door yep what's your option you do this models underscore students and then it will go and complain and say nope you can't name it like that it needs to match the file name screw that <laughs> screw that okay Jeez. so so i'm just telling you like yes. Guys, C sharp.net, like the language that we're playing with is extremely powerful, like extremely powerful compared to some of that nonsense that I'm seeing. Uh, testing, uh, good luck. You know, you need to inject. So in testing, check this out. In testing, you need to inject this magical thing, dot T. What is that? I don't know. And then that's the guy that's going to tell the test with. And by the way, if you take away the word test from your test method name, it will say, oh, that's not a test anymore. Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
What's this rust? <laughs> That's not rust. This is go. This is go. Oh, go, yeah. Okay. Why rust, do people use this language? Like, I what are the no, good I, things about it? <laughs> man, I have no idea. I mean, they say it's fast mm -hmm. and whatnot, but if you look at, and hey, if I want to know my variable name type, like I want to know what this type is. Like, let's say I'm calling this method here, add student, right? I want to know what it's returning. You can't just say, you can say var, but var is not going to give you anything. But I just want to know the type. They'll be like, nope, that's bad syntax. So I went to the Go folks. I said, guys, I want to know the type. Be like, nope, your best option is to do this. Watch this. You do this and you don't need the var anymore. I'm like, I still don't know the type of this thing. I still don't know the type of this thing, you know? So it's, you know, it's like I said in, in my in my Go video, I said it's like it's like a Neanderthal level kind of, you know, it's literally like the fact that you're telling me where to put my open, uh, you know, squiggly bracket, that's just, I don't know, let's just go to the 90s and just call it redonkulous, you know? That's just, that's a disaster, <laughs> you know? Anyway. People wonder why C Sharp is so popular. Like there it is, guys. Like yeah. black I, and white. I, I know someone out there will be like, "No, that's the right way to do things." I'm like, "Ah, stop it!" You know, I've 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 worked with so many different languages. The only language that I've seen so far that can uh, present an actual, maybe a real competitor to to C sharp is something like modern Java. Maybe it has some nice things, or maybe Scala. But other than that. I'm looking at these languages that people are going crazy about, and I'm like, like I'm sitting here shaking my head hard as I'm doing this, right? Yeah. By the way, I just put the video out there in the Go community on Reddit and be like, oh, you don't understand Go. I said, great, teach me, right? I want to have these <laughs> these problems solved. Anyway, I could I could I could rant about this for days, but uh, back to my point. You'd think, hey, we have enough projects on our hand. You know, but no, I want to show people actually that you can standardize even the crappiest languages out there, even if it's JavaScript, which is not even a real language. You know, you can standardize, you know, these things. You can actually bring a little bit more uh, sanity to it if you follow these particular components. Anyway, bottom line is, Etienne, Paul, thank you all so very much. This is great. <laughs> you guys probably will never touch Go ever again, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> you say that's the trouble of finding but, uh, it out. <laughs> but that's that's the beauty about our community, right? We get to sit down and try these things out. I haven't even touched PHP yet. I haven't touched, you know, I did touch PHP a long time ago, like some 15 years ago, but I haven't tried to standardize it yet. But uh, a part of the things that we play around with and see see how far we go. Um, you know, Etienne, push this component to, to the source control. You already have full access. And then let's see how far we can drive this. And Paul, let's uh, jump in the next session and tell us about this. Uh, what did you call it? Volcro? What is it? Uh, so voxels, yeah. Um, might be worth me doing a bit of a primer if you're not familiar with voxel engines and what they are. Yeah. Um, think, think Minecraft, right? So yeah. a box is a voxel, essentially. Sounds good. I can't wait to show you how, do you, how you do generics and rust. It's going to make <laughs> the brain rust. You have to call a thing called box. <laughs> <laughs> it's a reason why it's probably called rust. <laughs> I, <laughs> have, have we come okay. so far in our like technological and medical evolution now that we've just outdone Darwinism? So like <laughs> Now even the stupid survive, and now they've decided to start inventing languages that make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what we've come to? We can just marvel at our own magnificence as man. Look, <laughs> we can invent brain fuck. Sorry. <laughs> all right, guys. Why? I love you. Uh, I, I love you. I love you all. You guys are awesome. I'll talk to you later. Thank you all so very much. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>